You know, usually videos here are about tutorials and how to achieve some particular result. But today, I wanted to talk about something different. So, I'm going to present an architecture competition that I've won, show and explain the process on how the project was designed and how the board was composed. Well, you might have already seen this project, and it has been more than a year that the competition has passed. But since I didn't share it properly back then, why not make it into a video and maybe you guys can take something out of this, right? this video, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting the channel and helping me expand my online presence with the new OGraphics website. Go to OGraphics.com to see all the content gathered in one place, facts, videos and courses. More on Squarespace later in the video. Alright guys, quick note here. The first part of the video is about the concept and how I came up with the ideas. Then on the second part, I'll explain how I designed the board. Also, keep in mind that this isn't a recipe or a step-by-step -step to win a competition. I'm only sharing my personal workflow. But each project and competition has its unique challenges and the results will highly depend on the process. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I post weekly videos all about architecture and architecture representation. Alright, now back to the video. I hope you enjoy it. So, the competition for Brazilian students and recent graduates was to design an exposition pavilion that showcased Canada's culture, particularly from the city of Toronto. This was the theme of the competition because it was a partnership with the company hosting the contest, plus a travel agency that offers an architecture and English course in Toronto. So the winner, in this case me, won a month there with all the expenses paid, including plane tickets and so on. It was pretty awesome having this experience, and I was there in July of last year. Alright, now the briefing said that the project had to be around 350 square meters in a generic site, and by a generic site I understood that it would be an itinerant construction. It wasn't really specified that in the briefing, but it was my own interpretation. So for me it was clear that it had to be a clean, fast and easy construction, yet of course elegant, well thought and with a unique design. Since the main function was to exhibit the city of Toronto, which is an international hub with constant changes and a multicultural city, I wanted the pavilion to be an open space adaptable to various forms of exhibitions, like small or big presentations, exchange program stands, talks, lectures, seating area, maybe a film would be presented. So in my mind, it had to be versatile and capable of hosting any sort of event. Cool, then I've searched lots of references and essentially the structural concept was in its way. Also the function had already been established. Now before I jump into more construction details and space layouting, let me talk about the pavilion aesthetic. The project's concept was pretty simple. I wanted this pavilion to be minimal in all aspects. It couldn't interfere with the landscape that was going to be inserted, nor with the exhibition's content. The premise was to make Canada's culture the protagonist of this place and let the content itself speak and tell the story. As I saw, it was a very different approach from other participants. Alright, with all that said, structure, function and aesthetic wise, I then proposed a very thin and slender white steel structure with rocking beams. I don't know if that's the correct English term here, but I'll talk more about that in a second. So basically, the pavilion was a blank canvas ready to receive the exhibition, and I also designed these blank panels and wood modules that allowed constant changes in the proposed scenario. Alright, this sums up briefly the project. Now I'm going to use the board itself and why each of these elements are where they are to explain the rest of the project's details. The competition brief asked for two A1 panels in landscape orientation. So as in any type of architecture contest, you want to get the jury's attention right on the first panel. Therefore, I chose to place a full bleed render of the project and use the sky and ground to place important info that explained the concept and revealed how the pavilion looked like. It was kind of a, like a sneak peek of what's to come. If the jury was interested, they could get more info on the second panel. For the board composition, I used a monochromatic color scheme, all very desaturated with no cyan or blues, and I used this red, slightly orangey, as the accent color. Since the project didn't have a site as mentioned, I got background and foreground images that would best fit the render. 
and placed a sky in a collage style to contrast with everything and also to relate to the splatter texture over the blank panels. You know, you gotta treat your board as one full composition. I chose a full bleed image because the project was very horizontal and, and therefore left me with lots of free space to compose additional information. On the center we have the title and a brief text to explain the project's concept. There was a Canadian architect jury, therefore I chose to always input at least a summed up English version of the text. Then on the left, a concept diagram explaining the process and my ideas. So the pavilion is basically the site plane replicated that shelters the exposition in a simple plane. Also the project couldn't be a barrier by any means, I designed it to be open and visible from inside out. And the last one, a tree that represented this visual mark and could relate to the Canadian tree. Then on the right, an exploded isometric to understand the full extent of the project. To present this project, I decided not to use a plan, but instead showcasing isometrics. This specific isometric will link with the second board to show the occupation types. And to finish this first board, on the bottom, a section to show the overall building scale. Very simple and minimalistic, I didn't want too much attention to the area, so I chose white lines and a red arrow line to indicate that since the panels didn't touch the roof, a natural ventilation would occur. Now on to the second board. Here, I divided the canvas into two parts, the top one to talk more about the space flexibility and the bottom one to structural and overall details. These technicalities weren't required by the competition briefing, but nonetheless I wanted to show a deeper understanding of what I was proposing. Alright, let me go slowly over each of these drawings, starting over the top, four diagrams. The first being about how open and free the space could be. It would serve as a sheltered, public space for recreation when the exhibition wasn't taking place. I named it Blank Canvas, available for any sort of action. Second diagram illustrating how a grand presentation could take place. Using the wooden modules, you could organize the space into this oval lecture. Then the third with small presentations and the fourth combining multiple options. Using the blank panels and the wooden modules to create an interesting route with various moments of expositions, reading and learning. Now to the bottom part, more details regarding the structure and construction. As I said in the beginning, I opted to use rocking beams. I used the rule of fifths. I really don't know if that's the exact name of it. And also keep in mind that my architectural vocabulary in English isn't that good. I studied all in Portuguese and I tried to find the translation of it. But basically I used the rule of fifths to rock these beams out and therefore reduce the beam height, thus resulting in less steel consumption. This rule also allowed me to expand the free span for the exhibition. It works like this, if you place a pillar away from the edge by a fifth of the total transversal length, you use the weight of the rocking beams to counterbalance a flexion that naturally occurs. The floor is 50 centimeters apart from the ground and the edges create sort of a bench to the exterior. And also the edge has a detail that creates an interesting shadow and gives some elegance to the whole project. So when you're looking from the outside, you don't see a 50 centimeters lab, but instead a thin edge. The second column of information here explain how the rainwater would be collected, as well as what materials each of these elements would be made. The roof cover is made of polycarbonate to allow abundant, diffused natural light to enter the space. And of course, the outside perimeter beams would be slightly higher to allow a proper roof slope. Alright guys, all these technical informations were pretty rough just to show a better understanding of the design, even though it was just an idea competition. It wasn't going to be built, but for me it didn't matter, I wanted to make something that would actually work and not just some crazy pavilion idea. Cool, now to finish off, the third column of information details the furniture proposed to the space. I also made sure to explain how they were put together and insert a scale figure to create a sense of scale, so the jury didn't have to read what size they were, they just had to glance over this image and they would know how big the panels were. Okay, lastly, the fourth column was about an interior scene. 
It shows how the displays would work from a person perspective and eye level interior image. And to be honest, I didn't really know what to put here. I remember I had sketches of how the board was roughly going to be and this last space was still blank until the end. Alright guys, so this video was to show you my personal process and how I came up with this result. I did work over this much more than I explained here. I modeled everything in ArchiCAD to see all the dimensions, the spaces and the structural modules. I really hope you got something out of this video. Maybe it will inspire you to join a competition. And for that, I recommend you guys checking the website competitions.archi, which is a place where you can find all architecture competitions that are currently going on. In a quick way, you can check all the necessary info, dates, brief and prices, and then the page will give you the proper link to the official website. It's pretty handy. See, when you enter a competition, the prize isn't the only thing you should look for. Yeah, winning something is definitely amazing, but even if you don't win, the experience is already so good, you learn a lot and you get a good looking project for your personal portfolio. So I recently joined a competition with my girlfriend for a rural school in Haiti. We thought it turned out looking really great, but unfortunately we didn't win anything. But hey, no problem, as I said we learned a lot and exercised our design thinking skills. I'm going to publish this community school in my new website alongside with other contest boards I've done in the past, being individual or in groups. So once again, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. I'm building my new website as a place to gather all the contents, but also to serve me as a very professional looking online portfolio. If you are someone in the architecture or design field that wants a really professional online presence, that being a portfolio or your office website, you should definitely check Squarespace out. It's a very intuitive all-in-one platform that offers really contemporary and minimalistic templates that can help you build your website in no time. You can display projects in customizable galleries and even add password protected pages to share private work with clients. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash ographics to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Sponsors like Squarespace help me maintain this YouTube channel as a weekly show and spread free content for you guys. So thanks a lot Squarespace. Alright, so don't forget to go to my website to check these competitions and please comment down below if you enjoyed this type of content. It's a different video from the usual, where I talk about the project and my personal workflow of how it was designed and how the board was composed. Maybe I can do this with other projects as well, I don't know. Again, I'm sorry if I used any architecture English term here that wasn't correct, I would love to be corrected over the comments if you spot something that I said that didn't fit right. Don't forget to give this video a like if you learned something, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me at old.graphics on Instagram, and as always, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!